for this module, I will discuss about the sex chromosome abnormalities um, as well as their clinical features and the chromosome findings about it. Okay, so for the learning outcomes, we will differentiate and discuss the sex chromosome abnormalities and uh, will present a case study about these abnormalities at the end of the topic. Then, so here, let's start with decline filter syndrome. Okay, so this is a common condition with an incidence of, wait, okay, here, with an incidence of one, so 850 male live birth, it is due to the presence of an additional X chromosome. For its uh, clinical feature, in childhood, the child with this kind of abnormality may be clumsy or having a mild learning difficulties, okay? So, especially on their verbal skills, okay? So, the overall verbal IQ is reduced by 10 to 20 points below. And the adults tend to be slightly taller than average with long, lower limbs. Okay, so another features, they also show moderately severe gynecomastia, which is what we call the breast enlargement, as you can see it here. And all are infer infertile because of the absence of sperm in their semen, which is the azoospermia condition that's uh, small soft testes and uh, there is an increased incidence of leg ulcers osteoporosis and carcinoma of the breast in adult life okay so the treatment can be testosterone from puberty onward for the development of secondary sexual characteristics and the long-term prevention of the osteoporosis For the chromosome findings, the karyotype here shows an additional X chromosomes and molecular studies have shown that there is an equal chance that these will have been inherited from the mother or from the father. Okay, A small proportion of these cases show mosaicism, mosaicism I mean, uh, 46XY or 47XXY. Mosaicism means that um, a person have two or more genetically different sets of cells in their body. Okay. So next, so there is a rare case that a male with more than two X chromosomes can be encountered. Okay. For example, here we have 48XXXY or 49 or dummy X, apat. X, 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 Y. So these individuals are severely retarded and they share this physical characteristics with the Klein filter men, but often to a more marked degree. Okay, so next after Klein filter syndrome, we have the Turner syndrome. Okay, this condition has the absence of a bar body which is consistent with the presence of only one X chromosome. For the clinical features of this type of abnormalities, Turner syndrome is being detected during the second trimester, showing either the generalized edema or high drops, or swelling localized to the neck or to the nuchal cyst or thickened nuchal pad. Okay, so you can see it here in this image. Okay. At birth, many babies with Turner syndrome look entirely normal. Okay, others show the residue of intrauterine edema with puffy extremities and neck webbing. So you can see it here in this picture. Okay. So to continue, um, other findings also include a lower, a low posterior hairline. Increased carrying angles at the elbow, short fourth metacarpals, widely spaced nipples, and coarctation of aorta, 
and intelligence in Turner syndrome is within the normal range. Okay, so two main medical problems for this type of abnormality are we have the short stature and ovarian failure. Okay, the short stature becomes apparent by mid childhood and without growth hormone treatment the average adult height is 145 centimeters only okay so for the ovarian failure it commences during the second half of intrauterine life and leads to primary amenorrhea say so amenorrhea absence of menstruation also infertility okay treatment we have the estrogen replacement therapy it, it should be initiated at adolescence for the development of secondary sexual characteristics and um, prevention of osteoporosis. Okay. So for the chromosome findings, the most finding, most common finding, is 45X. Yeah, and 80% of the cases it arises through loss of a sex chromosomes. X or Y at the paternal meiosis. Also, there is chromosome mosaicism, mosaicism, and those with a normal cell line have a chance of being fertile. So, some cases also will have the 46XY cell lines, but they are phenotypically male. So, for the next um, condition, we have the multiple X female or 47 XXX, okay? Approximately 0.1% of all females have a 47 XXX karyotype, okay? These women usually have no obvious physical abnormalities, though head circumference is in the lower centiles. So, but um, actually, it can show a mild reduction of between 10 and 20 points in the intellectual skills and sometimes oppositional behavior. Um, actually, studies have shown that the additional X chromosome is of maternal origin and arises from the error in the myosis 1. And adults are usually fertile and have children with normal karyotypes. Okay? Um, so, females, the multiple X females, show a high incidence of learning difficulties, the severity being directly related to the number of the chromosomes. After this, we have another, we have the XYY or the double Y males, okay? This condition shows an incidence of about 1 is to 1,000 in males in newborn. It is important to stress that most of these men have no learning difficulty nor a criminal, criminal record, okay? However, they can show emotional immaturity and impulsive behavior. Fertility is normal. Physical appearance is also normal. And stature is above average. You can see it here. Okay. Intelligence is mildly impaired with an overall IQ score of 10 to 20 points below. And the additional Y chromosome here arises either as a result of non-disjunction in paternal meiosis 2 or as a post-psychotic event. Okay. So lastly, we have the two hermaphrodites. So this is actually a rare condition where both testicular and ovarian tissue is present, either a separate structure or ovotestis. Okay, so uh, most patients have ambiguous external genitalia with a phallus of variable length and urogenital sinus, and they are reared as males. They also predominantly produce steroid hormones. Okay. Um, there are patients here um, who, is, who were chimeras, let's say chimeras, yeah, 46XX or 46XY cell lines arising from the fusion of two zygotes 
although not all have true hermaphroditism, okay? So at least 50% of true hermaphrodites are 46XX with no Y-DNA, and gonadal neoplasia and breast cancer may be present in these types of patient. Okay. So for the next um, part, just I'll just give you a sample case study and we will answer it together. So here we have the case study one. I will read this. Okay. The situation is that the parents of a 10-year-old girl seek a follow-up appointment in the genetics clinic. At the age of 4 years, she had behavioral problems. So let's focus here, behavioral problems. And a microarray of CGH was performed from a blood sample. Okay, The result came back as 47XXX and it was explained these girls sometimes do have behavioral problems, are usually tall, fertility is normal, and here in the first counseling, it is said that everything will be alright, okay? However, by age 10, okay, 10 years, she is the smallest girl in the class. So take note on this, smallest girl in the class and still have a slightly webbed neck that had first been noted in the neonatal period. Okay, first question is that what diagnosis should be considered and what investigation should now be offered? And the second is how are the genetic counseling and future management modified by the new diagnosis? Okay, so from the previous counseling, sabi nila 47XXX. However, after 10 years, she has a short stature so this raises the possibility that she has a chromosome mosaicism okay so she might be mosaic for turner syndrome especially smallest girl in class second is this uh, symptom uh, i mean clinical um, condition which is slightly webbed neck okay so to to investigate this one, a buccal smear or skin biopsy should be offered, okay? And together with their karyotype, okay? So, if this is actually normal, other causes of this short stature would need to be considered, okay? So, second, the answer for the second question, um, if from the first na um test result if actually found to be a mosaic she needs to be investigated for the complications of turner syndrome okay might be uh, might be the kanang chd or congenital heart disease or horseshoe kidney disease okay so um the future management for this is that she should be referred to a pediatric endocrinologist and also, um, in, uh, the growth hormone treatment should also be considered, okay? So, that's it for this case study. Okay, thank you very much for listening to this uh, very short lecture. Thank you.